He had compassion on her. Praise the Lord. You know what's the matter? No wonder that God don't have any compassion on most people today because they're so wound up in their own ideals and their own... Uh, why, why in the world? I want to ask you a question. Why do you question God's Word? Amen. Why do you question God's plan? Why do you question? When the Lord said, I am the Lord that healeth thee, take it for what it is and use faith and go to work with it. Why do you question when the Lord said, I am the Lord that saveth thee. Amen. Call on my name and I'll forgive you. Why did you question the Holy Ghost when God said, I will fill you with the Holy Ghost and you shall speak with other tongues and the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. Why do you question that? Why do you question the gifts of God that belongs unto the church? Why do you question these things? God built His church upon the apostles and the prophets and Jesus Christ Himself being the chief cornerstone. Why do you question these things? Have compassion. Hallelujah. God wants to have compassion to you with you. Why don't you have compassion to the Word of God and let it work in you? Sit sat down and said, well, Brother Wall said it, Brother Mitchell said it, and Brother Dan said it, Mousy said it. Hallelujah. I want to tell you something. You can, you can turn my word down. You can say, I don't believe that. You can turn Brother Mitchell's word down, Brother Mouse's word, Brother Dan, word. But there's one thing that if you're going to heaven, you can't do. You can't turn the word of God down and go to heaven. You're going to live by the word of God. You're going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And you're going to have God's word all around you. Listen, God's word will close you in. Hallelujah. Did, did you know that? That whenever the Lord came, or whenever the devil came to uh, tempt Job, the first thing that he had to do was ask permission. Can I, can I, hallelujah, can I do this or that? He said, I can't touch him. He said, have you considered my, see God spoke to him and said, have you considered my servant Job? There is none like him. Hallelujah. And he said, but I can't touch him. Praise the Lord. There's a hedge built around me. Hallelujah. Is, are, are you living so close to God? There's a hedge built around you that you have to that Satan has to ask permission for he can get into you. Amen. Are you living so far away that you can't touch him? Why are you living in God? Are you are you just playing church? Are you really believing the word of God? Are you accepting what God is doing and letting God manifest himself in you? Hallelujah. I want to tell y'all something. That he is the hope of glory. If some calls it heaven, you can't call it heaven without you have the hope of Christ in your life. Amen. Have compassion. This one man, Levi, brother so-and-so, hallelujah, Levi priest, good, and he come by and he looks at him and said, well, I don't want to fool that dirty, nasty person. And he walks over on the other side of the street to get around him. Well, I, Brother Walt, I, I don't want to lay my hands on him. He might have something contagious. And I, I, don't want, I want to make sure that I don't catch him. I want to tell you before you go there, the Holy Ghost has built a hedge around you. And you can go in with any devil you want to. You can go in there in the name of Jesus Christ. And when you go in there, there's a hedge built around you. Amen. And Satan can only stand off and look at you. Right. Praise the Lord. What, what are you saying, brother? I'm saying it's time that people, they'll, they'll see somebody that's in need. Well, I, they're always in need. They're, how they do you? They always want something. They're always doing this. They're always doing that. <laughs> Hallelujah, come on now. There's, there's a lot of people living out in boxes, cardboard houses and things like that. That's got more money than me and you will ever have. Amen. They have a regular check coming to their mailbox ever, every week. Hallelujah. They, but they want to drink. They want to do the things they want to do. They don't want to have to pay a light bill. They don't want to have to pay a water bill. They'd rather go out there and sleep in the cold than to have pay their bills and have a good warm place to live. Praise the Lord. But there's some of them 
that absolutely does not have one meal. Hallelujah. And that one that doesn't have a meal, them others may come up and, and, and knock on your door and say, give me something to eat. Will you give me, will you, could you give me something to eat? Hallelujah. But I, I want to tell you something. Whenever they come, God will let you know where they're at Amen. and what they need. Praise the Lord. Oh, but Brother Wilder, I don't want some old bum coming up. Hallelujah. I don't want some old bum coming into my house. I don't want somebody coming in to bother me. Wake up. Have compassion. God took you when you wasn't nothing but a bum and saved you. Hallelujah. Come on now. When you wasn't no good. That song that Mike was singing here tonight. Praise the Lord. There's a lot of us that can... I can't know what that song really means. Praise the Lord. We haven't always been the best. But God takes the very worst and makes something out of it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Some, but, oh, but Brother Walsh, you know, I, I just don't have much compassion with people. And I don't have much talents with the uh, way that people live. I don't like the way a lot of people live. Praise the Lord. I don't like their... They're the way they, they want to live. But let me tell you something. If I have a little compassion with them, I might lead them to the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. And if I lead them to the Lord, and they get what they need at the altar, you know what they're going to do? They're going to straighten your life up. There's been a whole bunch of you that's sitting here tonight <laughs> haven't always been the finest person in all the world. But it took God to change you and turn you around and make you what you are. Praise the Lord. Oh, but now, Brother Lord, I've always been uh, upright. I've been smart. I've been this. Hallelujah. Everything but what you ought to be in, and that's humble. Amen. The Bible said, humble yourself, therefore, in the sight of the Lord. And he said, God will exalt you. He'll lift you up. But he said, he that lifts his own self up gets abased. He gets pushed back down. Praise the Lord. But he that will humble himself will be lifted up. I will be lifted up in you. Amen. I go to God to say, well done. Then to hear him say, you stiff necked and uncircumcised at heart. Hallelujah. Oh, but now, but oh, wait a minute. We need to learn how to have compassion. Praise the Lord. Whenever we do, you know, it's easy. I'm not going to ask you to hold your hand, but there's a lot of, lot of people that's easy to make mad. And whenever they get mad, they get angry. And then they let their anger, like someone was saying, they let their anger bother everybody around. Did y'all ever have any problem like that? No, 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 no. Very simple. I said I wouldn't vote. But listen to what I'm saying. When you and I learn how to humble ourselves before God, and God lifts us up, everybody around us can be blessed. Did you know that, you know that a lot of people you can be around all day and you're not going to receive one blessing by being with them. Amen. Hallelujah. They're going to complain. Yep. They're going to, they're going to uh, talk about everybody in the country except them. Praise the Lord. You see, we must learn how to use what God has given us. See, God's got a tool in our life, every one of our life to win souls. But we can't win if we don't use them. Did you know there, there's tools? There's all kinds of tools in the world. There's tools for you to do woodwork. There's tools for you to do arm work. There's welders to weld together an arm that is broken apart, a metal that's broken apart. Praise the Lord, but there's no way can you take that welder and weld two pieces of wood together. 
that stuff just smokes bad. <laughs> Hallelujah. Gets in your eyes and all that. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Why? Because it's not for that. But there's some glue that's called Gorilla Glue. <laughs> Don't get it on your hands. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't try to glue your false teeth in. Praise the Lord. Because, hallelujah, if you can get them in, but you can't get them out. Praise the Lord. If you get it on your hands, it takes about all day to get it off. And you can use everything in the book you want to. Praise the Lord. But it holds wood together. And you just stick them together, just put a little on there. Sometimes you can stick them down in water, put them together, and they go, go together quicker, faster, better. Praise the Lord. But listen to what I'm saying. You cannot take that bandsaw you got in your shop that you cut your wood with. Don't try to cut arm with it in metal. It just absolutely won't. It just zip through that wood. But it just sits there and smokes and burns when that metal turns. See, why? Because it's not the tool you need. Now, how in the world do you expect God to use Christians when they have an attitude problem? Always being smart with what they say. Being, hallelujah, well, I know as much as anybody. Thank God for that. Praise the Lord. But do you know Jesus? See, the thing that we need to learn how to do is use what God has given us. You can glorify the name of the Lord. Let me show you something. One time back years ago when we first opened this church up, this platform was uh, long back, back here. When uh, uh, it was from here back. And whenever we first built home to it, built these and them two Sunday school room on that side, two on that side. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But there was an old boy come here from Hopkinsville. And they was telling me it was on Saturday. We used to have Saturday night service. I packed out the all night on Saturday night. And they told me, man, this boy, you talking about, praise the Lord, this boy can really, really sing. I said, well, wonderful. He's a good Christian boy. Hallelujah. I said, I called him by name. And they told me what name. When I called him by name, I said, would you go and sing for us? Well, we didn't have any piano players hardly then, just when they drifted by. I played the guitar and I, I strummed down on He said, I just wrote a new song. I hope it'll be a blessing to you. And I said, I believe it's G chord, Brother Walls. I strummed down on G chord. And he said, I left my girlfriend in Kentucky. <laughs> I just held my hand down there. He said, ain't you going to play for me? I said, not on that, I ain't. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't care where you left your girlfriend. I want to know about Jesus, not your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, but, 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 but why didn't you let him sing it? That wasn't just the right chord. <laughs> he was singing it. Hallelujah. So I explained to him, I had compassion on him and said, Son, we don't sing them kind of songs in the church. We need to know something about Jesus. If you want to sing something about Him, hallelujah, you can sing I found Jesus in Kentucky if you want to, or whatever. But leaving your girlfriend in Kentucky, well, I believe you just better just leave her out tonight. Praise the Lord. See, what are you saying? I'm saying the boy didn't know any better. He didn't know any better. And I did. And if he wanted to sing, he, <laughs> hallelujah, I didn't feel like playing for him. But listen to what I'm saying. When you and I, when we run into them situations, it'll of still saying, well, you lousy rascal, you. What in the world do you think we're running here? Now, wouldn't that be nice? Hallelujah, no. We had to, I had to have compassion. <laughs> 